Hello guys, my name is Bakang Mulupi and I'm going to teach you guys how to render shadow separately in Cinema 40. Sometimes you need to render shadows separately so that you can be able to manipulate them like I did here. Maybe change the opacity, you know, add a little bit of color, um, animate it. And this process also works for animation. So it is. it was very useful for me to be able to separate these shadows because most of the time, uh, you know, you, you want full control of your renders after rendering from Cinema 4G. And I'm compositing in After Effects. So I'm going to start uh, right away. I'm using Vanilla Render. So this process also works for Redshift. Create a new project if you haven't done that. So I'm going to reset everything I did. So I have lights here and a camera. Nothing really added on here and this is my objects, the models. So I'm gonna hit my camera right there and sweet. This is pretty much um, everything you need. So I'm just gonna copy everything as is so that I start afresh in a new project. And you can also find this wiki file on your on the link i've shared it on the link below so perfect this is where we are right now starting everything afresh the lights are on here i've turned them off it's important to have your lights so that you'll be able to you know see your shadows uh, in your render but without further ado i'm gonna start right away the first thing that i want to set up is my render settings because we need to render multi pass to be able to extract the shadow so first of all i'm gonna come here at output and then set my frames to 1920 by 1080 my dimensions and then i'm gonna select where i'm going to save this i'm gonna go to shadow compositing and then say render 2 and then I'm gonna call this beauty. Sweet. T is raw. Save it. And then I like PNGs, so I'm gonna change that to PNGs. And then this is very important to hit the alpha channel because we want the transparency of this beauty render. So now we are done with that. You wanna go back to click multi pass. Because like I said, we need to render shadows separately. And then you're gonna go to multi-pass here. And then when you hit it, you just search shadow uh, by pressing SH and shadow will pop up here. It's checked on and then you click again. You wanna add object buffer. You just type OB, object buffer will pass. And it's important that you see one here. And We'll, you will know that very soon object id it has to be one so i think we are done in our render setting so i'm just gonna squish this over here and then come back here so you will notice on my objects here everything that i want to see the shadow of is in one layer named objects it's my uh wooden flooring don't need that so it's my lounge. My lounge is pretty much all these <laughs> couches and table and the little two bags here. So all my objects are in this layer except for the ground. So the ground is outside and that's the only object that is outside and independent there. Because we don't need to see it in our render settings. We only need to extract shadow from it. So I'm going to left click on the objects and then go to render text, I'll add compositing. And then it's automatically select your text. So the only thing you have to do is enable this buffer. So remember when I said you need object ID one, because it's reading it from this compositing tag right here. 
and if you want to render multiple shadows that's when you can enable these things and probably if you want to add a second shadow buffer here you will type buffer object buffer and then change to two now you are gonna in this case you're gonna have two shadows the one from object buffer group id one and then the one from object buffer group id two but for this case we only need one and i'm going to delete this other one so it's one corresponds with this one from our compositing text that's a very important process in extracting the shadow so now we are done with the compositing tag and the render settings so now i'm just gonna check my renders if they look cool and if the shadows are as they are so it looks like everything is fine right now i can see my shadows under the table under the chairs and the reason why we want to extract this shadow and be able to control it separately is because like i said sometimes the shadow is too dark sometimes the shadow is too light and you want to be able to you know have that control in your compositing process back to cinema 4d i think uh we are done here by the way so i'm just going to hit oh i think i'm forgetting something yes <laughs> render settings back here i'm going back to save because we have saved multi-pass, remember? So we only assigned the, you know, where we are going to save our object to the beauty render only. But we forgot to use the, to assign for multi-pass. So I'm going to name this multi-pass, which is going to be your shadow and your, um, render to your alpha. So yep, now we have assigned it, PNG, cool, cool, yeah, now I think everything is done, should look like this, so I'm just going to hit render right here, and we are going back to our folder, which is render2, to see our images pop here, you should be able to see three files here, when it's done. Cool, cool, cool. So we have beauty one, our main image, and then we have multi pass shadow, the shadow we are going to extract, and the multi pass object one, which is from that object ID that we just talked about. This one right here. So cool, cool, cool. Now you open After Effects. So I'm going to say file, new project. Don't save and then 1920 by 1080 looks cool and then I'm going to get that image I had for my background and then I'm just gonna reduce it a little bit yeah because we want to place our table in this uh, our scene in this desert right here so I'm going to go back to render 2 and then select all these three and then drop them here. Let's lock in the background for now. And then, yep, yeah, because our scene was 1080 by 1920 by 1080, the models will fit right perfectly, the, the pictures will fit right perfectly into the composition. And then I want to put my object ID at the top and the beauty as the second. This is the alpha image, and then the beauty is the second, and then the shadow is the last one. So I'm going to my beauty and then select Luma Matte so that I can be able to see my beauty render there. Cool, cool, cool. And then the last thing I wanna do is come back here to my shadow layer and then multiply it. So see, nothing happens, right? It is because there is no background in the scene. 
that is being able to pick the shadow. So now we are going to our background which is the desert and turn it on. So now you see the desert can pick up the shadow without that uh, the flooring that we had in the Cinema 40, this one, without this floor. So uh, to be able to like, you know, put this nicely, I'm just going to select the top two together and then parent it to the shadow so that I can position the, the objects nicely into my scene to make the angles look bearable and then I will parent the shadow to my desert so that I can again be able to position my scene to the center P like that depending on how you want your scene to look I want to see the I want to be able to see the the little bit the top of the desert there scale it a little bit to put it in the center yeah i think this looks cool yeah now that we have that the shadow is separated here you can control it turn it off turn it on animate it to turn it reduce it here then you know increase it here so without even affecting the objects the other objects in the scene so that's how important extracting a shadow is uh, so this is done and thank you for watching if you're wondering for the other thing that's going on here in the scene we can see that there's a little bit of a white edges around our scene here well that's because uh, you need a, a choker and if you want to learn more about chokers please watch my other videos on that and refer to other sources as well. Thank you for your time. Bye.